which is great for um, its graphing functionality. Uh, so you know, if again, if you've watched my other reviews, I've got the metrics, which I I find it a really great graphical multimeter. It also has a dot matrix display, but this one is bigger and displays things far better. The processing power in terms of what this can do compared to my metrics is also far better. One day perhaps I'll do a side by side of the two and, and show the pros and cons between the two of them. Um, but this uh, dot matrix display is great for displaying um, graphs. But when it comes down to displaying digits, although it's got a nice clear display, plus you can have multiple uh, readings on the display, the, the way the digits update are another point um, which I have a little bugbear about because they tend to almost ghost or blur as they're changing. So it's not as clear as a normal seven segment LED display, but then this display is built to provide far more other functionality. Okay, so before we get into its uh, kind of features and functionality, let's just go through um, its kind of, see it's test its accuracy against my digital multimeter check. At the moment I've got it on the 0 0.2499 range on the check over here and it actually was showing exactly that. It's only just tipped up. So again, certainly well within its spec and what it should be doing. That's on the 1500. And as you can see, it's only a, a few counts out at the end. We're on the 5 volt. And again, nothing wrong with that. Still well within its uh, quoted spec. 7.7500. Now here, because we've gone over the 5 volt mark, it's dropped one of its um, decimal places. But we still have three decimal places. And there it's again slightly out by a couple of counts to the resolution it's going to, but still well within its spec. And now we're on the 9.950 and again for its resolution and its quoted spec it's well within that. Right, and here we're doing the current check and it literally just as our there we go, it's kind of sitting spot on uh, what it should be. You'll have to excuse a poor little reference check here. That's another project where we're going to correct um, the fiddly way th this is done, but still um, as we can see in terms of its milliamp reading it's certainly uh, if not on only a couple of counts out. So one thing I wanted to highlight on this multimeter it's um, it certainly has the right certification and category safety category ratings. It's rated to CAT 4 600 volts and CAT 3 1000 volts. It's certainly fused on its uh, milliamp and its main amp 10 amp um, ranges. Um, then what it also does which is brilliant and this is done via um, optical sensors inside the uh, banana jacks here is that if certainly if you're on the current range which is potentially where you can make your biggest mistake and cause a short if you're trying to measure voltage it will warn you you can see the warning comes up that uh, the leads aren't connected correctly because it can't see them plugged in so certainly if you have them in the voltage range when you've got it in there you have that warning to tell you you're in the wrong range and there's a an optical pickup so that when you get it plugged in then you know you're correct okay so I've set the uh, camera up at this angle now so that there's less reflection on the screen. We're about to do test the resistance values. For that I need to null out the resistance which is in the lead. So, and I want to show this process because there's a few things to note here. For one the Fluke 287 obviously has a menu system and that potentially bugs a lot of people but it does with a, a multimeter with this kind of functionality it is required. So there's a few things to note because in the relative mode we don't have auto ranging so we have to go to the range button here and set it to uh, a manual range and I've set it to I need to set it up to 5k because we're going to be, ne be nearing that range I then clip the leads together and then go into menu and relative so that we null out we've got a zero reading and then we'll start our measurement. 
So here we go, I've got it on a 999.3 ohm resistor and in essence it's on that reading, there we go, it's actually hovering around smack on the nose. So certainly no problems with that, that measurement there. Right, and this is the 10K resistor noted as 9.997 and it's a few counts out there. Um, I have nulled out the leads but certainly still well within its spec. This is the 100K resistor and it's been calibrated or measured to 9.995 and here again certainly it's only a little, a little way off there so certainly no problems there. Right, so now I have my variable power supply connected. We're just going to go through the voltage range to see how it auto ranges and I just want to demonstrate uh, what I was telling you about on the clarity of the digits. Um, while we're here, what I'll do, I'll just sh give, quickly show you the um, backlight as well, which actually works very well. So if I switch on the backlight, it's got two phases, that, and it's a nice even um, backlight and I switch it on it's got another level over there and then the third button actually switches it off. Now let's have a look at the auto ranging capability on the voltage and those digits. So I'll bring you in for a close look so you can understand what I'm saying. So the one thing actually I want to highlight while we got it at this level is that bar graph on the bottom there. So the one thing this where this multimeter really chances probably every other multimeter I have is it's a digital representation representation of something that's happening analog i.e. a varying a varying reading it's placed in the middle so it's great you can see both positive and negative which I think is great and it's got mul it's got a multiple segments to really give you a granular reading and it's fast and that's what I love really really love about this this meter if you've got a varying um, reading as you can see the display you wouldn't be able to really make out what's going on but that uh, bar graph certainly does show you. Okay so let's just step up so say so here the beauty is that this multimeter its resolution um, below one volt is great. We go up. Now look at those figures as you can see there are nice big are nice big um, digits but can you see the slight ghosting as they change? And that for me, if I'm tracking, as I say, let's say something like a capacitor charging, um, the update speed is great, but there is just that slight ghosting, and that's where I think a seven-segment uh, liquid crystal display performs better. But anyway, let's go up. There we go. It overranges and now drops down to its three decimal places. And we'll go up through the range. And we'll just take it up quickly to the maximum of my variable power supply to 30 volts. And uh, there you go. No problem there. Right, so let's have a look at its continuity tester. Because that's obviously one of the commonly used uh, features. And you obviously flick through on this. You flick through to the uh, ohms or resistance on your selector switch. And then on the display here, you'll see there's a little um, annunciation or a little graphic icon showing you your soft button up, up here for your continuity. So you push that and it gives you this kind of visit, this uh, lovely little display of showing that you've got a break in essence. And when you put the leads together, a nice clear, crisp, latched. Um, sound and also that little graphic on the on the display coming together and super fast again an area where the flukes uh, always tend to trump other multimeters is their continuity tester is really fast latched and certainly reliable right so while we've got the meter like this and before we go into its kind of um, other functionality. I just want to say that the the fit and feel of this meter certainly is brilliant. If you ever purchase or have this meter in your hands 
it it's got an integrated holster so it's not a separate holster it's not the kind of meter which is really designed to be thrown about it'll certainly take a drop the selector switch would potentially uh, be a little bit vulnerable um, but it certainly has a good quality feel in the hand the plastics the buttons push nice and easily the selector switch is one of the nicest feeling of all my multimeters it really is easy to use and to make selections it also has over here if you can see it's got an information button so it's actually got a built-in help where you can scroll through it explains uh, functions and functionality um, and tells you literally how what it's an online um, manual in essence Right, then I'll show you it's got, um, say for each function you've got selected, you've got a menu button so that you can pull up the functionality of what you're doing. Let's just go into the setup quickly. It has quite a, a big setup where you can set up uh, bits on the meter. Um, you can, it's obviously got calibrate, but you can't go, the calibration obviously um, is for if you take it for calibrating. There's I think like a 52 step process to get this calibrated. Um, obviously software update you can select here uh, you can set the display that the format of the time and the date um, and I think it's where is the information let's see meter info I'll just enter on that and you can see it gives the date the firmware revision when it was last calibrated which is on uh, 29th of June 2010 it's only been calibrated once I've got um, I've gone and updated it with my information in here as well, which you can do if you've got the um, the cable and software. I will say the cable it, the cable and software are additions. It's not cheap, as I recall. The price is about two hundred dollars, which is just earth shattering when you already pay you know in excess of five hundred dollars for this multimeter. But yeah, there you go. Right, we'll just show some of its added functionality in some of its uh, measurements. I've got it hooked up to mains. 